Paul, the Library Director for the Brockton Public Library System. I'm here today to welcome you to a virtual version of Everyone Has a Voice. For those of you who don't know, Everyone Has a Voice is the brainchild of poet Philip Hesaurus. It's hosted by the wonderful Ali Brioso, and we're doing it today in partnership with the Brockton Community Access Channel. Uh, Phil and Emma and the gang down there, thank you very much for your time and your, your efforts to put this together virtually. Uh, I also want to put a shout out there for, to, and thank uh, Mayor Sullivan for the great leadership he's showing during this time. And a great thank you to our first responders, the police department, the fire department, the DPW, uh, Brockton Emergency Management, and the Board of Health. You guys are outstanding in what you're doing. And all I can say is from the bottom of all of our hearts, we thank you for what you're doing. Also, let's thank the uh, store clerks and the hospital staff and the truck drivers who are delivering our food, making sure the shelves are stocked, and keeping us uh, healthy and safe in these times too. Now, talk about safety, we wanna make sure everybody is safe out there. Make sure that when you go outside, you are wearing a mask to cover your nose and your mouth. Make sure that you have um, all the proper precautions in place that are, uh, that are recommended by the CDC and the Surgeon General of the United States. Um, in the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, enjoy this online version of Everyone Has a Voice, and we'll see you real soon. Critical Recognition. I am the cat stretching, the bear emerging from hibernation, the snake shedding its skin slowly, deliberately. I am the changing seasons, sleepy winter ushering the warm tears of spring, summer solstice elongating, sun radiant in its illumination of earth, my phases of reflecting light. I am the salmon swimming back to origin, the bird homing to womb of nest, migrating, circling back to familiarity, past the danger. The emperor penguin exhausted forever in its perilous passage, generations connected before and after, like the ripple effect of a single drop of water, earth, water, air releases its memories. I call out to you critical recognition. I am the baby stirring, child awakening, adolescent developing. The mature that exists, has existed, will exist. I am a very small drop in the liquid universe, rippling, rippling. I am the embryo of a new day. Uh, hey, everybody. It's Jason from Oddball Magazine, and I'm writing, um, I'm, I'm reading a poem uh, for Everyone Has a Voice, uh, the poetry series uh, that was at the Brockton Library, that is at the Brockton Library, but right now we are quarantining. So here's my one of my poems that I will submit for the Everyone Has a Voice show. So here we go, Jagged Thought 314, Quarantine Before and After Coffee. <clears throat> Quarantine Before Coffee. Slow, steady, I type on the keys. Quarantined. Quarantined After Coffee. Stuck in doors, kicking in my drawers, thinking feet on the floor, listening to Pete Rock, should I say more? When I listen to this, I get raucous. My mind thinks quick and I hit the skids. I get obnoxious. Never pretentious, throw the word around like a 2020 census. What's the consensus? You know what this is. Rhyming lunatic on a caffeine biz. A little of this and a little bit of love in a mug and I kick it to the beat of the keys and the drum. First few sips, coffee drips, down stains the page, look at me now, clown with a uni brow, getting down to the sound, listening to Pete Rock, 9.40 a.m. in the morning now, I woke up late for work, went downstairs, hell of a commute, I put the coffee in the cup, it does not compute, the keys on the keyboard like spaces on a chessboard, I wonder if someone like Stevie feels like this, because he plays the keys so effortless, I type on my computer to the sound of the beat, it swells me, encompasses me, 360 degrees, I can't edit this, just writing practice. A writer's block collective interrupted. Fill the cup up, let's get productive. Time for a refill, cup number two. Gotta get this to Chad still. Three dollar bills, fill up the landfill. Put on my ear goggles and I'm ready to go. 
This one is called the Coffee Rodeo. I got a cup of caffeinated. I get like I just made it mental masturbation. Keeping it to the flow of the radio. Listening to Pete Rock. Typing on the keys. Stop while I'm ahead. Doubt it. Shout about it. I'm distracted and my flow is still on point. I digress. I don't have to puff out my chest. I keep it a tribe called Quest and Evidence. I keep it together through this cold weather. Get it together with the ill communication, keeping locked up in my space station. Break into the rhythm, the radio is waiting. Got a beat in my head and I get it going, doctors stay patient. I keep on walking down the freeway like 2003, when nobody knew me. Manic boy running free on 128. Would have went to 93 if Stady didn't stop me, so I walked my way to a hospital. Bush was in office, it was terrible. I took a two-month stay in McLean while they rewired my brain. Prescription poet with a little bit of pain. I keep on, I kept on and on. Moved back home, made bad friends who came best. Met Lisa, she became my best. Moved to the big city, got my degree, and in 2010 started Oddball Magazine. Back in 95, it came alive, and in 2010 took shape. Incubated in a mental basement, moving up like Jefferson. This is the way it should be. You got a dream, then let it be like Lennon and McCartney. You might get it your way like Burger King. Might get it together like MCA. Might keep it moving like a tribe called Quest. Might make something out of nothing. Might make a dirty dozen, might make something. Might make a mighty, mighty Boston out of the man with the microphone. And Obi is barking at me. I say, leave it alone, this poem. I think I got my point across. But I don't think I can't stop. Rhyming Zoloff got me soft and smooth like CL. Funky like Dell. Busting lyrical shells. Keeping all five senses. Can you smell what P-Rock is cooking? Mixed with coffee and karma. Got a madman booking. Got my style shaking and baking. Like earthquake on the regular. Keep it going, never stop. Because we can't stop. Puff Daddy turned P. Diddy, now let the beat drop. Coffee cup got my heart fluttering. Took a minute and I'm back at it. My wife made me breakfast. Probably should stop a minute and fuel up. Bye for now, but I can't let go of this rhyming stuff. Now I'm going to get my day started. Going to listen to Paul's Boutique. And that poem was called Quarantining Before Coffee and After Coffee. Uh... Um, and that was my poem for everyone has a voice. So, uh, you know, everyone going through all this stuff right now, we're going to get through it. Uh, let's keep up with the poetry and the writing. All right. Peace. Again, this is Kenya McDonald, also known as K Mac. I'm local poet from Brockton. The next poem I'm going to present to you is called Sister Angela, dedicated to Angela Davis. Sister Angela, Angela Davis, revolutionary powerful Angela, charcoal color Afro Angela, a need to ride or die Angela, had a soulful blue, soul sister funkiness Angela, even her funkiness got down in five as the nets buzzed around her head and loaded metal shots, fire, boom. Sister Angela, Sister Angela Davis, revolutionary, powerful Angela. Shit, mama was a bad political tiger. No cage could hold her. No poster could silence her. The mama was a ride and die, yes, ride and die kind of chick. Yes, mama was a ride and die kind of chick. Sister Angela, Sister Angela Davis, fist up, mouth open, Roaring, roaring, she demanded freedom. Freedom for freedom for the prowling cat. Freedom for the youthful horn blower. Freedom and recognition for the chicken blood lying at the feet of Lady Liberty. And recognition for the red flag above her head. Sister Angela, Sister Angela Davis, Sister Angela, Angela Davis. Revolutionary powerful Angela. I'm doing another poem called Another Train. Another train sends me crossing bridges in darkness. Another train has no fear of daylight, teaches me warmer rivers. Another train never stains a glass. With my teardrops, another train reminds me that my journey is 
infinity. Another train glides me down forbidden, forbidden territories. Another train has taught me my lover's mourning habits. Another train, another train is a drowsy sun that tickles my elbows, putting thunder in my mouth as I go towards the south. Another train is no resting stop to wait away the silent hours. Another train has me resting my head against the anxiousness of my friend. Another train comes to take me, take me to another pilgrimage. Another train takes me. Another train takes me to unknown regions so I can remember my own humanity. Thank you. This is a poem about a librarian that I um, met in, in college back in, in my home country of Guatemala. She, uh, very, she was very serious about keeping silence at the library where I learned um, mathematics uh, as an undergraduate. And the poem is titled Generation X. Now that coronavirus day by day swallows our world, it seems to me, I say, that in our adolescence we have been too boisterous, too blasphemous, too keen. Recall the time when, wandering the stacks, the old white-haired librarian in slacks, placing two fingers of her puckered lips, sternly rebuked us. Silence. Hands and hips, we thought, crazy old lady, as we fled. I catch myself among the books I've read, examined by her gaze and realize the future of this world of ours lies on quietude and silence, oh so true. Librarian, I still remember you. This is Joyce Wilson. I'm going to read from Langston Hughes's book, The Dream Keeper. Bring me all of your dreams, you dreamers. Bring me all your heart melodies, that I may wrap them in a blue cloud cloth, away from the two rough fingers of the world. Hold fast to dreams, for if dreams die, life is a broken winged bird that cannot fly. Hold fast to dreams, for when dreams go, life is a barren field frozen with snow. Reading a poem by Langston Hughes, I too sing America. I too sing America. I am the darker brother. They send me to eat in the kitchen when the company comes, but I laugh and eat well and grow strong. Tomorrow, I'll sit at the table when the company comes. Nobody will dare say to me, eat in the kitchen then. Besides, they'll see how beautiful I am and be ashamed. I, too, am America. Afraid. She's 60 pounds soaking wet, a significant portion braces on her teeth. A good and bright child from the big city. She has a loving mom and dad. Takes piano lessons. Sees an analyst weekly. She tells me this offhandedly. Love science. Has trouble breathing due to her fear of crabs. Says she's had to change schools twice because she was bullied. She's doing better now in the new place. I invite her to join our tour of the salt marsh. 
holds my hand like the last rung on a ladder before the fiery abyss, watches other children in the water collecting specimens in seining nets, comb jellies, fish, and crustaceans from the shallow pool. They pull it to shore, empty the contents on water's edge. We wander over. She doesn't fit in, but will not give. Begins to unfold her fear at bay there in the sand. She lets go my hand. Death of Tea Ticket Hardware I never knew his name, nor he mine. He was always there, patient, polite, shy. I never knew the name of what I needed either, but he did, after listening. You know that thingamajig that connects the hose to the washer? I need the innards of a lamp. He'd find it in a flash through overcrowded aisles so narrow only a munchkin could maneuver. In the back of the store on the dusty top shelf where what's-its lived. He'd tell me how to use it, and he'd tell me again, drawing it on the little scratch pad he kept at the register, not the electric kind, next to the dish of pennies and the bowl of lollipops. I would always leave with a red one, in confidence. He was the kindest man in town. I imagined he went home at 5.30 every night to the apartment above the store and told his wife over meatloaf and mashed potatoes, green beans and pecan pie. That lady came in again today, seems bright enough, but doesn't even know a lamp has a socket. And he'd smile when she would say, oh, Mrs. Dimwit, and they would turn on the news at six. The drive to town is eerie now the tea ticket hardware is gone. Boarded up windows stare like a zombie whose soul's been stolen by Walmart. Peter Cabral, son of Peter, son of John, I never said hello or goodbye or thank you. Just before dark, the cardinals are my vespers. Slow down, they say, take care. They take turns at the feeder. He, on a low branch, watches, waits. She eats each sunflower heart slowly. After each swallow, she turns towards him, as if nothing can be taken for granted, as if everything is sacred. The light dims Day merges with night. Now it is his time to feast on what remains. Each seed is savored. There is enough. He turns his brilliant head, his crown flat. He is calm. He is safe. She is there. He takes the last seed and is off to her on the branch nearest my window. Beak to beak, he opens, she receives. This is more than mating. It is almost. Amen. This is Fred Marchant with a poem for the virtual. Everyone has a voice. This poem is called Pinckney Street. Pinckney Street. A view from the crest of Boston to the river. A walk. And my friend stopping to say that for three weeks each year and beginning tomorrow, this will be the most beautiful place in the city. A respite in the brick-faced buildings, blushing in sunlight, its star magnolias swelling, about to burst into bright badges medallions of tangible life and light. The shook foil that Hopkins wrote about. The minutes we have of grandeur, hope, gratitude.
Serendipity meets me in Provincetown. I'm going to hear a famous poet tonight, a genuine United States poet laureate himself, I said out loud, to a hunched-over skinny dude in billowing poet pants, who sat next to me on a bench outside Spiritus Pizza of Provincetown, Mass., I was in the mood to chat, so I kept on, on topic, as they say. I've read some of his work before, but I've never seen him. Wonder what he looks like. Hi, Bob, said another man. How are things? I turned to eye my benchmate's profile. I smiled at him. He pretended not to notice. I said, the poet laureate's name is Robert. That would really be something if you turned out to be him. He and his buddy acted like I was babbling. Wasn't getting me off topic, no siree, Bob. I should think being poet laureate is a burden as well as an honor. Having to say profound things all the time. Can't exactly talk about mending socks now, can we? That evening, in the town hall of a New England seaside village, my benchmate stood behind the podium, his voice resonant, his words profound. He spoke. He spoke of mending holes, holes in hearts, holes in families, holes in socks, each mending a necessary act in its way. I grinned with surprise and joy. I chuckled in my audience seat. Afterwards, I bought an autographed book, a marker of our serendipitous encounters. Food for my soul. That laurel headpiece is utterly deserved, you know. He wears his greens beautifully and humbly. My Husband and Our Goat My husband and our goat wield their gardening shears and teeth adeptly. They prune, cut back dead wood, fight the wild tangle of thorns and poison ivy against encroachment. Of what exactly, you ask? Encroachment upon fields of order and plenty. Encroachment by land waterlogged with unseasonal rains and vapors. It seems encroachment by unknown factors happens. The winds circling our earth need to cleanse themselves. Now about that pruning, my husband and our goat know it's got to be done. Weeds and germs of all sorts spring up everywhere, spread insidiously, overtake till it's almost too late. But it's not too late, is it? Thank you, Lord. You will see us through these times. Amen. Karma on April Fool's Day A Native American shaman telephoned me the night before. The ancient holiday of New Year's Day in springtime. Translation, April Fool's Day. To ask... If he was still scheduled to speak tomorrow, on April Fool's Day, to the Ladies' Charitable Civic Club about ancient ceremonial rock formations created by his ancestors across all the New England forests and fields. His first peoples had laid huge boulders over the earth's face, where scars of hurt or points of power, vibrated into the earth's skin, the landscape. First peoples marked the spots by creating stone serpents and rock whales, cairns that covered the slain, and rings that mirrored the heavens, just like a stone henge. We agreed. Karma in the universe had decreed. 
April Fool's Day was not auspicious. Ancient wisdoms of the first peoples would not be bestowed upon the ladies' charitable civic club. Their loss, and they would never even know. We left it for another day, another season. Day. No day? Turning. Forever turning. Whirly gig spins a steady breeze. Whisper of dandelion fluff. Slide of a silk skirt. Yellow and blue turning to green. Cream churning to butter. Lobster burning red. Daytime turning to nighttime. Small miracles. In a world that has lost its rhythms of wind and air currents, the language of clouds, all the threads that entwine us, forests whose winds send moisture to dry areas, the ocean, a world that has gone astray with its rising temperature, a bush of vibrant purple flowers shimmers in an empty field. And in Vacubo, Puerto Rico, on a seaside cliff where Hurricane Maria landed exactly a year ago, a man with a sonorous voice opens the day at sunrise, streaming it throughout the island. I am the light of the morning that shines new paths that floods the mountains and farmers' trails. A meeting in the time of contagion. We talk to each other from across streets and through screens now, slowly becoming acquainted with the low-touch rules. Still, when I see a long-lost friend in a store, someone I thought had moved to Florida decades before, it is natural and innate that we shake hands in the center aisle, and then immediately with regret, we both look at the floor and say, we probably shouldn't have done that. And so the conversation continues for the requisite few minutes of catch-up before we move on to his purchase and my car. Though I stop in the lobby before I go and scrub myself with wipes meant for card handles and doorknobs, the sting of the sanitizer tearing into the cracked skin on my hands like the fire of knowing that acknowledging joy and friendship without thought in these days might be fatal to one of us or to someone we love or someone we never even meet. As if we are the wings of the metaphorical butterfly who destroys the entire world. As if we've never been that disastrous before all this happened simply by living our casual consumer lives. La peine. Je dis à moi sentim piti piti, tout piti, tant que yon tag d'eau cap dégrainé nan j'ai chagrin. Moi portré yon zéphélé sur yon tab penché, tout jambe viré, contrariété fait mou les mains. Moi pas ka tan journée ça al faire route li, pour qu'em bat yon l'autre jan, pour qu'en al la joie me déborder, n'ayé tout j'aime chagrin. Sadness. Today I feel so small, very small, like a drop of tears dripping from distressed eyes. I am like a cracked egg on a tilted table. Whatever I do, troubles take over. I can't wait for this day to move ahead so that my heart starts a new beat and my river of joy overflows to join all my sadness.